Okay, so Waveshare have sent me a couple of three and a half inch screens to test. And these are cool because the way they fit onto the Pi is via the GPIO pins. So they fit onto the underside of the Pi. So what it means is ordinary cooling solutions work. So I've got a heat sink on here and an active fan as well. But these two use different technologies for screens. So this is resistive, so it needs a bit of pressure. This is capacitive, so it uses the electricity in our hands to activate. So if we go a bit closer to this one, you might see some weird effects here on the screen close up, but you don't see it with the naked eye. So if I tap on here, you can see that the program's come up. But also, if I tap with my finger, I really don't have to tap hard at all. So it's not like resistive screens used to be. This is very responsive, and I didn't really think it was a resistive screen when I first started testing it. Let's try and get it that we're not getting that effect. Hopefully that shows up a bit better. So I've got emulation station on here. I've got a mouse and keyboard plugged in so I can launch emulation station or RetroPi. And I've got my Xbox controller plugged in. I'm actually using a power bank as well. So if I tap this, this will tell me how long. So it's currently using four watts. I've got nine, 10 hours at 45% on this power bank. And it goes up quite a lot as well at different times really difficult to make it look good on camera right so you can see here if you're using a three and a half inch screen some systems aren't going to be very suitable so something like Game Boy Color is going to be ideal try a bit of Mario Tennis haven't got sound plugged into this at the moment but it works fine and obviously this was designed to be used on a tiny screen so it, it just works really well Let's just jump into a game and obviously, a screen this small, this is really hard, I'm playing this through my camera because I'm further away from the screen. It's certainly not ideal, but we'll give it a try. Shows there's no input delay, really. Yeah, it definitely is coping fine with that. No problem at all. Right, let's quit out of that. Back into emulation station. So, another one of my favourites would definitely be Game Boy Advance. Love it. It was a system I had back in the day. Actually, I had an ordinary Game Boy as well. So let's go for WarioWare. There you go, straight in. Looking good. And this, if you've never played it, it's uh, a load of mini games and it is really, really good. And it gets faster and faster over time. So you've just got to react really quickly. The early levels are super easy. So very, very straightforward. Really quick little games. I'll show it on the full screen so that you see it uh, because it's good with the sound as well. So the soundtrack and the various different elements of it really add to it. So it speeds up and speeds up. It's really, really good. Oh, missed it. You really don't have a lot of time. So let's quit out that and we can shut this down or at least quit emulation station and let's go to the Waveshare site and we'll have a look at the two screens. So this is the 30897, the one I've been using and we've also got 30896. So if we pull this tab out, let's see if we can get these side by side. So the one I've been using is cheaper, 1599. Same resolution, 320 by 480 on both, but you get five points of touch on the capacitive screen, whereas the resistive is just one. And you can see toughened glass panel, so it's a harder display. And various bits of spec here. So is the touch driver going to be the same on both? Yeah, it's different look. So I was thinking I was going to be able to just copy the SD card in this and put them both on at the same time, but it looks like I'm going to have to install this one on the capacitive screen and do a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS. So SPI interface, I2C interface, touch panel size is bigger on this as well. I have noticed that in the very corners it's harder to press on the resistive. 
although I have got a stylus with a DS now, so that's gonna be much more accurate. So it's really gonna depend what you need it for. So if you need multi-touch, and you need a, a more sort of resilient display, I guess you go for the capacitive. So if you want something with just single touch, but also very pinpoint control, then maybe the resistive is for you. But they attach in the same way, which I think is great. So that's the same, both 60 hertz, both support the same sort of devices, and you can see on the backs of both of them here, very similar. But the pins are listed differently there and all the overall dimensions are in here if you need all of that. So I need the support pages. In fact, first of all, I need to do a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS. So let's shut all this down and I'll do it like I did on the other one with an SD card. So let's launch Imager, choose OS, 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. Although this is one step newer than the one I was using before. So it'll be interesting to see if it works with all the new updates. And let's write that and come back when that's all done. So instead of directly connecting it to the underside of the GPIO pins, what I could do is use one of these cables so that plugs into the port on the back of the display and put each one of these on the relevant GPIO pins on the top, but it's just a lot easier to sandwich it on. So what I've done is I'm using this ice tower cooler, the bigger model, and I've just changed these. So. It was using these for spacing, but I'm using these. It's not a perfect fit, but I haven't tightened it down super tight, so it's still gonna do a good job of cooling. And you can see all of the GPIO pins appear to be lined up fine. You can't really do that wrong. But what I really like about this is it just looks like a CRT. It's an old school monitor, and you could incorporate that into a design. So let's plug this in to a bigger monitor. You could set it up headless, but I think this is just an easier way of doing it. So let's go to the Waveshare site. Just check that I've got the right one. 30897, I think, is the right one. We'll soon see. No, it's not. It must be 30896. Okay, so this is the one I've got. Now, somewhere on here, there was support. It was like a wiki. It wasn't super obvious at first. Here it is. It's a long way down. And they call it Raspberry Pi LCD F. So again, it's got that different pin layout but we can see this is the capacitive one and you've got to install all of this. So I think that's where it starts, yeah. So let's copy that and open a terminal. Be nice if this was automated because there's a lot of steps. So what I'll do is move that over here because I'll be switching back and forth. So let's do this. Now the first attempt didn't work for me and I think it's because I copied this wrong. So I copied this as a whole section and it doesn't work if you do that. And even if you try and do the first line, what happens is it doesn't recognize it. So what you've got to do is download this file. So if you just click on it, the web browser will download it. You can see it's downloading here. Then you need to unzip it. So if we go to files, now, you'll see my desktop's looking a bit weird because I have actually done this already uh, and I've got the screen up and running and the little screen is the one with the main desktop on it. So if I drag files up from the little screen, so we can go to home and downloads and this is the file that it downloaded. So we need to unzip that. So extract here. So that's the bin file that we need. And we need to copy that to lib firmware. If you try and just drag it into lib firmware, you'll find it doesn't work because it's uh, an encrypted folder. So that's how we need to do sudo copy to that location. But we're not in terminal at this point. So what you would do is do tools, open current folder in terminal, and then copy that in. And that will copy that to location. And just to show that I've already done it, so we keep going back, so lib and firmware, and it's in here somewhere. Uh, I'll do it full screen so I can look for it. st7796s.bin, so there it is. So we know it's in the right location. And I don't think there was anything else with the rest of the instructions. Yeah, this is a bit annoying. If you don't know how to edit the config.txt file, 
this would just be meaningless. So what you need to do to edit that, and hopefully I've still got it in here. Yeah. So you need to do sudo nano boot firmware config.txt. And what that will do is open up that location and you're copying all of this into here. Again, I've already done it because this is my second attempt. And you're pasting it down here. You can see all of this matches up exactly. And it even doesn't tell you how to save it. So if you don't know how to save it, you're kind of stuck. But it's Control X. Uh, and then it would ask you if you want to save. So you say yes and then enter. And then when you reboot, it was all there. Uh, and I'll show you how it looks. So let's just close all this down. So the screen's in portrait mode, and I'll show you it a bit closer in a minute, but the operating system is mainly on this screen, and it actually works pretty well on there, but if I was to launch something, so say for instance files, I can then drag that straight up to my main screen, or my second screen. But let's unplug this and show it on its own, because the quality definitely looks better. So if I shut this down, So here it is plugged into a power bank and it currently says it's using three watts. In fact, it just dropped down to two and a half watts, 55 hours. This charge is currently at 88% capacity. So yeah, really efficient as well, but definitely brighter than the other screen. So I've got this one next to it because this is a second generation iPod touch. Uh, just to show that we used to use three and a half inch screens on our mobile devices and they actually perform very well. Uh, obviously, this operating system isn't the best for it. Raspberry Pi OS uh, is a desktop operating system. And if I try and launch the browser, there we go, that's come up. But, I mean, the browser is pretty much unusable. But it's very sensitive. The, the touch screen definitely responds really well. So I'd say out of the two screens, I prefer this one. The quality definitely looks better to me. Uh, in fact, if I try and close this down... What can I get on there? If I just get that and then move it much, much closer to my camera. Again, the camera doesn't really pick it up. Um, it, it really doesn't look as good as it should. But to the naked eye, it actually looks really decent. Nice and crisp, nice color, good contrast. So thanks very much to Waveshare for sending me these two screens. I am impressed. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.